this is our calendar. We might, um, we're going to need a third day on this manipulability of voting systems. I'm going to add a date three for Thursday. And then I can do a possibility and share his paradox in one day. They're not, they're real simple. They're not, they're not going to be a problem. Tomorrow we'll, 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 we'll finish this and then I'll spend time answering any questions that you have on the problems on pages 15 and 22. Oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of pages. I understand that, but uh, we're going to have time in class to work on that tomorrow, and just get started on 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 them. Take a look at these. Try try manipulating these on your own using the different voting systems we we've talked about, and then following the guideline that we could, that's in your notebook. Um, so we're going to practice public today. No, we're gonna we're gonna do notes tomorrow. I'm gonna finish the notes, and then we'll have in class practice problems i'll i'll answer any questions you have but you guys should start the pages the, the problems that start on page 22 in your in your workbook and uh there's an assignment online for you guys to upload the pictures of your workbook um what did i ask for i think i asked for four pictures Pages one and two, pages three and four. Just take one picture, upload it on Canvas, and then I'll just I'll put it that in the great book. So try to get that done by Friday, and we'll be good. So this is where we're at right here. Um, I had a question about this page. Did I go over the different options for you guys? I think I did. I talked about there's two different, three different ways you can move the two boxes because sometimes you've got the winner at the bottom and you can't always move and manipulate one of the voters' preference ballots because when you got the winner at the bottom, you can't you can't move them two boxes. So then the other option is to bring the runner up two boxes. And if you can't do that, then you, you've got to drop the winner one box. And bring the runner up one box. And if you can't do that, then what's our last resort? The last resort is to, to try to go through a tie, through the train wreck, create a tie. If you have a tie, you're not going to have any, you're going to have no decision. But that's the last resort. When you're manipulating these preference tables, you want a, a more favorable outcome than what. The current winner has. So again, this class is not about right answers. It's just playing with the tools that we're given and changing an election to a more favorable outcome than what we have. Start what, what we start out with, which we would call the sincere ballot. So that being said, let's go right to the talking about plurality runoff. So this is the sincere ballot. And first thing you got to do is you got to figure out who wins election one, right? Not, you guys need to learn how to manipulate these voting systems. So plurality runoff, we're only looking at the first place votes. That's not my highlighter. That's not my highlighter. Where'd my highlighter go? You're gonna, only going to look at first place votes here, All right? We're only looking at first place votes. And so I got three candidates here. I got candidate A, candidate B, candidate C. Candidate A has, has two tally marks. So that's two votes, two first place votes. Candidate B has one first place vote. Candidate C has two first place votes. Okay, so plurality. Runoff method. Remember, we have two scenarios. You're either going to take all the candidates that are tied for first place and, and, and eliminate everybody else, or if you don't have two people tied for first, you take the first place candidate and everybody tied for second place or the, or the one candidate that's in second place. Those are the two scenarios. This is only two steps. We only got two cycles here. Everybody else goes bye-bye. So what do we have in this scenario? Who's got the most votes? 
we got a tie here. So this is the first scenario where we got a tie. So there's a tie between A and B. And so candidate, I'm sorry, between A and C. So candidate B is eliminated. So you take him off the preference table. And then you got to redistribute that voter five's vote. And the next candidate in the line is going to get that vote, which is candidate C. So he gets he gets one more vote. I'm sorry. If one more vote, and he's our winner. So now C won the election. So who's happy? Well, voter three and voter four are happy. Why are they happy? Because their first choice won the contest. So they're not motivated to change this outcome. But look at voter one and voter two. They are not happy. They got their third choices. So both, both voter one and voter two are, are fairly motivated to change this outcome. Now, voter five, yeah, he got a second choice, but um, we're, we're not, we're just going to manipulate voter one. So voter one, we're going to try to manipulate his preference ballot to see if we can get an outcome. Well, he voted for A, number one, and voter A didn't make it. Now, when voter B was eliminated, candidate C received that voter five vote. Well, what would happen, voter one's gotta be motivated to, to switch this order. So he, he, this is his motivation. Usually someone you have in last place in the, as a candidate is someone you can't stand. You're not gonna vote for them. And so voter one is gonna think rationally, well, I'd be, be I'd, I really would prefer voter, my, my candidate B over candidate C winning. So he's gonna switch up candidate A and B there. We're gonna manipulate his vote. Now he's not gonna bring up candidate C. He still hates candidate C. But he's just gonna change the position of his first and second choices. So voter one has manipulated his vote. And watch what happens. This is, this is really cool. So now he's taken a vote away from his first choice candidate A. And he's given it to, to candidate B. So when I do this again, that now candidate B has two votes, and candidate A only has one vote. Candidate C, well, we didn't manipulate but those guys. They, he's, they still have two votes. So now candidate A is eliminated. So when we eliminate candidate A. From our preference table, who gets voter two's vote? Can it be does? Can it be does? So can it be gets that extra vote? And so a candidate B ends up winning. And so voter one has manipulated his preference ballots such that he was able to have a different outcome, one that he more favors, one that he gets his second choice winning instead of his last choice winning the contest. So get it? So this is just like the hair system. When we manipulated the hair system yesterday, we just change the order. And what's going to happen is you're going to eliminate in the hair system, we're always looking at the last place vote. In this one, we're looking at the top, top people tied for first or the first and second place contenders. Questions on that? So that's how we do for alley runoff. It's only it's only two rounds and we have a decision. It's really quick. I'm going to look at sequential pairwise. Now sequential pairwise is just like condorcet's. The only difference is is that it has an agenda list. It has an agenda list. So this is my target that we can manipulate. This is what we're trying to, our goal. 
that you can manipulate and learn to manipulate sequential pairwise voting. And the agenda list is this right here, A, B, C. And remember, with sequential pairwise, if the candidate loses in those one on one matches, they're eliminated. They go home. There's no looping back through with them. So, so let's look at this. So first thing you got to do, you got to figure out who wins the first election. All right. So I'm going to look at election one. And I'm just going to pair this up by the agenda list. So A versus B. So A gets the first vote. B gets the second vote. A gets voters three. And so A wins. And that means B is eliminated. So now A is going to face um, candidate C. Candidate C. So B is eliminated, and A is going to face off candidate C. Well, A gets the first vote, C gets the second vote, C gets the third vote. A is eliminated. C wins. C wins. That out that that outcome. What are we doing every day? What? What are we redoing every day? Not redoing every day. We're we're analyzing this. We're trying to manipulate this. We're trying to decide if all the voting systems we learned from last six week marking period. We're trying to decide if they're manipulable. That's why I told you guys we had to learn these. We're gonna we're gonna be using these all. All, 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 all period, all of the, for the next four weeks. Okay, so we're looking close, more closely at these. So now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have voter one has 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 changed, has manipulated his ballot. He again has changed his first and second choices here. He's got a. Rank second now. Up here, he had a rank first. And look, 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 look where C was. C is his least favorite candidate. So he's motivated to change the outcome. Voter three is happy. He got his first choice to win the election. We're not going to change anything to the agenda list. We're just going to change this preference ballot for voter one. So now we're going to do the same thing. So it's going to be candidate B and A facing off at first. So A versus B. Well, B gets that first vote. B gets the second vote, and A gets the third vote. So so B wins. Last time, A won that one-on-one -on -one matchup. So A is eliminated. So now B is going to face candidate C. A is gone. So B versus A, C, C gets the first one, B gets the second one, C gets the third one, and we get B wins. So you see, just by manipulating his first and second choice in this insincere manipulated ballot, this is the sincere one. He's going to be happier having his second choice win the second election. All right. And that's where he's motivated. And that's just manipulating the voters' preference ballot. Sequential pairwise, we're just doing the ballot manipulation. All right. Who needs more time on the notes? Everybody got this? All right. The next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about sequential pairwise, but now we're going to manipulate the agenda. What we're going to do is called an agenda manipulation. So let's look at this. So this is this is what my learning target is: learning how to perform agenda manipulation on an election using sequential pairwise. And we talked about this in chapter nine. We, we looked at this, that, that the sequential pairwise was manipulable, all right? Now, if we change the agenda, 
it'll sometimes change that outcome. And this really works best by changing the agenda list. This works best when, when, when there's no winner, when we have an election where there's no winner. I mean, it can be a Condorcet voting paradox, but it also works when we don't have a winner, when we, when we just don't have that trade-off. So the first thing you gotta do is you got to write out every, every contest. And that's what I have here. I have candidate A versus B. That first row is all candidate A going head to head with the other candidates. So candidate A versus B, candidate A versus C, candidate A versus D. I go to the second row and I'm gonna go candidate B versus C and candidate B versus D. And the only one that's missing is, is this one, is candidate C versus D. And I'll move that over. Oh, it's not going to let me move it that much. So I'll give myself some more room here. All right. So that's all the possible scenarios for head to head. And I'm just, this is my, I do this for scratch work. This is part of my guide that I got to lay these out. I got to figure out who beats who. Okay. So now I'm going to do the contest. So A versus B. Well, A gets the first vote a gets the second vote b gets the third vote well a wins so this is just notes nobody's getting eliminated here i'm just i'm just comparing all the candidates and how they do against everybody else now the next one i'm going to do is a versus c a gets the first one c gets the second one c gets the third vote so candidate c wins that round now candidate A versus D, candidate A gets the first one, candidate A gets voter two, but then candidate D gets the third vote. So candidate A beats candidate D. So now I'm gonna move on to candidate B. Well, candidate B versus C, B gets the first vote, candidate C gets the second vote, candidate B gets the third vote. So candidate B beats C. See how candidate B goes against, does against candidate D. So candidate B gets the first vote. Looks like it's a slaughter. Candidate B skunks him. So candidate B wins. So now the only one we haven't done is candidate C versus candidate D. And so candidate D gets the first vote. Candidate C gets the second vote and candidate D ends up winning. All right, so I have all my parries. I have all my parries for by one-on-ones. So what you want to do after we write out all the contests, we figure out who wins who, you want to put the winner that you want to win in the last, last spot. You put the winner you want in the last place. Sorry, I can't read that. Okay, so when we have a agenda list, remember we got we got four contests here. So we have A, B, C, D. So the last spot would be in D spot. The person, the candidate you want to win, you put in the last spot. All right. And then in the place right before that, this place right here that precedes that last place. You, you put a candidate in there that you know that candidate D can be, all right? And then you repeat it all the way down the list till everybody has a match. And if it doesn't work out, then you gotta, you gotta switch the one before. You gotta do a little juggling. If it's not, it's not hard. From the place before, you gotta put someone that the winner can be candidate that, that they can win against. And then you repeat till all the agenda is created. All right? I know this is kind of abstract. So let's look at this. So if we want candidate A to win right here, sorry, I thought I was, I thought I was, uh, yeah. 
I thought I had my my highlighter here. So if we want A to win, we're going to put A in our last position. So that's where we're going to put them. This is the last spot in our agenda list. And then we look at our contest. Well, who can A beat? Well, A can't beat C. But A, candidate A can beat B, or he can beat, they can beat candidate B. So either one, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick candidate B. All right? Now, who can candidate B beat? Well, candidate B can beat both candidate C and candidate D. So I'm going to pick candidate C. I'm going to put C in the next spot. Well, who can candidate C be? Is that in order? Yeah, we're going backwards. We're working from the backside. So this is backwards, like our, our manga book. So A can beat B. That's why we put him last. And that's why we put B next. They're, they're beatable. And then B beats C. So we, we put B in that next position to the left. Now, the only person that we haven't put up there is candidate D. And so by default, we put them in there. Now, this is not a problem because D, candidate D does beat C. But know that candidate B beats D. Okay, so we could have done, we could have put D or C in this position and we chose C. But, but, Candidate B will be either one. So this is this list right here, this agenda list that we just created. This agenda list is going to have it so that candidate A wins. All right. So DCBA, that agenda list, our candidate A is going to win it. Go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. So what if we want? Candidate B to win. Well, we got to put candidate B in the last position. And so who can candidate B beat? Well, I know that candidate B can beat candidate C and candidate B from this. So I can borrow from this. I can borrow from that one. So I'll just put, I'll just do the same order. I'll just say candidate C. Well, who does candidate C beat? Well, candidate C beats A. So now I'm going to change this up a little bit. So I know that candidate C can beat A. I mean, candidate C cannot beat D, but, but that's okay. So now the next one, we let's see what happens with D. Well, I know candidate A can beat D, so this one worked out perfectly, exactly the way we described in the list. So that Agenda list will will have candidate B winning that contest. So let's do it for candidate C. Okay, so you guys tell me who, who goes last. Who goes in the last position? Who goes in the last spot? C. Yeah, candidate C does. And who does candidate C win B? To B? Yeah, the only one that candidate C beats is A. So we got to put A in the, in the spot right before it. So then we look at who can candidate A beat? Well, candidate A will be candidate B and, and C. Oh, wait, this is C. Can C, no, I'm sorry, candidate B and D. So candidate A will be B or D. So we'll just say um, B. We'll just put B in there. And then by default, the, the one that we haven't listed is candidate D. Candidate D is the one that doesn't beat anybody, right? You know, D, candidate D does beat candidate C. All right. All right, you guys move on to number five or letter five, letter D, and do that contest. I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do the attendance. And then I'll be checking. I'll be checking your. Uh, your homework pages. Hey, Dar, do you want to shut that door? Thank you. All right. Who is next?
not here. Mrs. Zoe? We're missing Zoe. Jade, you're so quiet today. Me? Yeah. Where's Emma? Emma's not here. She gets whole life. Oh, a whole week. I'm 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 D, C, okay, okay, got something, Charlie, you got it, come on, man, wake up, so these last, So if I want D to win, I'm going to put him last. And I know that D can beat C. So I'm going to put him next. I'm going to put him next. Well, who beats C? Who beats C? Well, B beats C. Wait, this is A beats C? A, A, C beats A. B beats oh, So I'm going to put... C beats A. So I got put A. I got put A names. I misspoke. And then B is going to be the last one. All right? That's how you do it. All right, I'm going to do one. That, I'm going to do one of the examples in your workbook. I'm going to do the example on the top of the page of page 21. It's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of contests. There's like 11 or 12 I contests. Skip, like, a lot of I did. But these are the practice problems that you're supposed to be working on independently. Because you got, you, you know this because you know this, Jade. You wrote the book. So this section's got a lot of pages. It's not a lot of problems. It's just there's a lot, you need a lot of room to manipulate these context these elections so i'm going to skip to page 21 and i've already written out i've already written out my contests i've already written these out so my first row this is all candidate a against everybody else i've got down five candidates here this is why i'm doing it with you and then the second row is is the ones that candidate b hasn't faced and the third row is, is the two candidates that candidate C hasn't faced. 
And then the last two candidates will be candidate D versus candidate E. All right, so these are all my contents. There's 10 of them. There's 10 of them. Okay. So now we just do the contest. We, we, we make it happen. So A versus B. Well, A, and notice we got four, we got four voters. We got an even number. So this gets a little it gets a little wonky, but it's okay. I'm gonna, I did this on purpose because I want to show you it still works, even when there's a tie. Okay, so voter A versus gets the first vote, voter B gets voter two and voter three, and then B ends up winning. B wins. So now A versus C, A gets the first vote, A gets the second vote, A gets the third vote, C gets voter four, a wins against C. Now A versus D. A gets the first vote, gets the second vote, gets the third vote. D gets the fourth vote. So, but A still wins. Now A versus E. Well, A is at the very bottom here. A wins all those. A skunks them. All right. So that's all the candidates against A, against candidate A. So now I'm going to look at candidate B. I'm going to look at, at candidate B and how they they come off here. So candidate B versus candidate C. Well, C gets the first vote. B gets the second vote. B gets the third vote, and C gets the fourth vote. What happens? No winner. There's no winner. There's a tie. There's a tie. This is a tie. There's no winner here. Okay, there's no winner. I'm just going to box that. It's okay, though. It's okay. It's not broken. We can still do this. Candidate B versus candidate D. So here, B gets the first vote and gets the second vote. Voter three goes to candidate B, and candidate D gets voter four. So candidate B wins that one. But how does B versus C a tie? Because they each get two votes. We got four votes up here. We have an even number of votes. I want to show you that agenda manipulation still works even when you got a no decision between two <clears throat> candidates, because we can work around that. And this agenda manipulation works works only when you have a scenario where there's no winner. It could be that the reason you don't have a winner is because you got B and C each other. I'm going to show you how, how, how to do it. So we're just going to follow the same guides we have in our notes. So now candidate B versus candidate E. Well, candidate E gets the first one. Candidate B gets voter two. Candidate B gets voter three. And candidate B gets voter four votes. And I just got three more contests. I go candidate C versus D, candidate C versus E, and then my last one is D versus E. So C gets the first vote, B gets the second vote, C gets the third vote, and C gets the fourth vote. So C wins. C versus E. C gets the first vote. C gets the second vote. Well, this is a stump. C is really weak. It's at the very bottom there. Now D versus E. Well, E wins that first one, but then D wins all the other three. So D wins against E. So there's all my contests. And I've circled the winners. I've boxed my tie. And I ask the question, what is the agenda that will allow candidate B to win this contest? Well, we look at the guide. We're going to put them last. Now remember, now we got five people in line. And so who does B beat? Well, B beats A. So we're going to put A, we're going to put A next. We're going to put A next. Now, who does A beat? Well, A beats everybody else. So I'm just going to pick. 
I'm gonna pick C and get and get them out of the out of the loop. I'm gonna pick C because we want to create enough distance so that B and C don't face each other. Because if B and C face each other, we're gonna have a tie. So I'm gonna put C next. So now who does C be? Well, C will be D. And that's the one I'm going to put next, E. And then we're still missing one. We're missing D. And you see that D beats E? Is D beat C? Just doubling this up. Yeah, C beats D, but A beats C. So we paired this up and we're still going to be okay. We, we have this guide, and even though it doesn't work exactly how we planned. It's still the people at the end. We're still going to get candidate B to win the election. That almost fits, spells a word. That would have been an L if it said decal. All right, questions on this? So now, if we want to do an agenda list, manipulate an agenda list so that. Candidate A wins. We're going to put candidate A last in our agenda list. So A is going to be last. And uh, we know A beats C and D and E. So um, we don't want B and C ever to meet. So I'm going to put I'm going to put C next. And then I'm just going to borrow up here. I know E, oh wait, B beats D, does B beat D? Yeah, B beats D. C beats, who does C beat? C beats D, so I'm going to put D next. I'm going to put D next. And then who does, uh, who beats D? Well, B will be D, so let's change that. And then the only one I haven't put in there is E. And B eats B C. That one worked out. So there it is. That's my agenda, and that's it. That's what I wanted to show you today. Just want to change my. Here's all matches. That is the solution to the problem on the top of page 21 in your workbook. All right. And there's more than one answer that you can come up with. Like that. Questions on that? 